I'm here with Christine Helgason, mm -hmm. Deputy Chief of the Development Cooperation Policy Branch within the Department for Economic and Social Affairs uh, of the United Nations in New York City. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the German Development Institute. Thank you, Matthias. It's a real pleasure to be here at the German Development Institute, and uh, it is held in such high regard in the global development community, so it's a real pleasure to be here with you. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, Christian, uh, the post-2015 agenda will mm -hmm. likely look very different from the uh, present and uh, current Millennium Development Goals. Mm -hmm. For once, because the new agenda needs to be universal. Uh, what are the likely changes that uh, uh, you expect? Yeah, I think the main thing is that the current agenda, the Millennium Development Goals, was primarily focused on the needs of the least developed countries. It was about serving the, the basic needs of those countries for education, health, water, sanitation, etc. But in the new agenda, it really reflects some of the changes that have taken place in the past 15 years. This deepening of globalization, greater interconnection between countries. So we have seen a large number of new challenges emerge. And in the new agenda, we can expect that many of those will be reflected in the new agenda. So the issues like climate change, preserving the uh, biological diversity, protecting the oceans, and so on. So I think that's the signi significant development that has taken place is becoming truly a global agenda. Yeah, and so let's have a look at the United Nations, which plays an important role in this uh, respect. Mm -hmm. uh, what changes do you expect for the United Nations, uh, especially when it comes to development? I think this will entail uh, significant changes for the UN because, uh, of course, the UN, in order to be relevant, has to continuously adapt to the changing uh, development needs. And uh, so what we are seeing now is that Many of the countries that have moved up the economic ladder need different kind of support uh, in order to get onto the globalization train. So we could expect that issues like norms and standards would become more important in the work of the UN. But generally, uh, of course, at the heart of the work of the UN will be to continue to serve the least developed countries. But in addition to that, addressing the global public goods and the global challenges, I think that's also going to grow in importance. And, uh, and uh, so for the UN to be relevant, it has to be able to provide effective support in enabling countries to address those challenges in an effective manner. You just mentioned uh, effective support. That's what the UN has to offer. But in your view, uh, what UN reforms are necessary in order to respond effectively to future requirements and challenges that you just mentioned. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that uh, the current model of the UN may not be well suited to deal with these kind of interconnected uh, development challenges. It's very much a product of a different era and different political context. So essentially the organization was designed along functional specialized lines and uh, that is not suited for a new era when the development challenges are more integrated. So I think when we look to the next 10, 15 years, uh, the organization will have to move towards a much more integrated organizational model, and that would require changes in financing, in uh, governance, and of course all kind of organizational changes that would allow the organization to truly deliver as one. And I think that is kind of the, the major organizational challenge that the UN faces uh, over the next 10, 15 years. Christian Helgason, thank you so much for joining us today here at the German Development Institute in Bonn. My pleasure.